بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس السلام علیکم آج کا لیکچر اس دعا کے ساتھ شروع کرتے ہیں کہ خدا بن مطال تمام عالم بشریت و انسانیت کو حالیہ وبا کے خطرات سے محفوظ فرمائے اور ہم سب کے لیے آسانیاں عنایت فراہم فرمائے ڈیئر اسٹوڈینٹس ایز یو نو وی آر اسٹڈنگ اباؤٹ دا ریڈیو نیوکلیائڈ ڈیکے پروسیس اینڈ ٹو ڈے ان دس ریگارڈ دیر از آ پارٹ فور لیکچر اپ ٹین نو وی ہیو اسٹڈیڈ اباؤٹ اسپونٹینیس فیشن ڈیکے پروسیس الفا ریڈیشن ڈیکے پروسیسز بیٹا ریڈیشن ڈیکے پروسیسز اینڈ پوزیٹران ریڈیشن ڈیکے پروسیسز ان اسپونٹینیس امیشن پروسیس یو نو وی ہیو اسٹڈیڈ اے ہیوی نیوکلیس انڈر گوا اسپونٹینیس لی فیزائل پروسیس ان وچ ٹو ڈاٹر نیوکلیائڈز آر فارم ود دا ریشو آف 60 اینڈ 40 الونگ ود are two or more electron neutrons and heavy amount of energy this energy is uh, that is liberated as a result of uh, fission process is used in a number of different uh, sectors power sectors the other type of decay process that is uh, asus alpha decay process in which uh, a nucleus having more than 82 proton in its nucleus and uh, definitely a huge number of nuclei inside the nucleus such type of a nucleus uh, unable to maintain the stable arrangement of uh, nuclei and as a result of this in order to get the stability they undergo helium nuclei generation and liberation so this helium nuclei having two proton and uh, two neutron associated uh, with the reduction of uh, two atomic number in the parent nucleoid and uh, four number by atomic mass we also studied the alpha particles play role in uh, medical field in order to treat cancers because it have uh, high ionizing power and uh, very small penetration to the de- tissue so due to this reason uh, in radio pharmaceutical or nuclear medicines alpha particle emitted radio nucleoid was labeled with biomolecules in order to treat cancer like that prostate cancer and many others as well the other kind of decay process that we studied is the gamma sorry beta radiation emission decay process in which the nucleus the nuclei actually reach in neutron number so in order to reduce the neutron inside the nucleus to get to the stable n over charge ratio the neutron disintegrated into a proton and beta particle having negative charge along with anti neutrino this beta particle have a different uh, energy photons different energy values due to the energy of these photons and burning power of these and ionizing power of these beta particles these beta particles also utilize in uh, medical field in order to treat cancers so such type of radio nuclei which decay through beta radiation they are labeled with the biomolecules and these biomolecules are injected into the patient body and these biomolecules are specific to cancer cells and 100% accumulate at the surface of the cancers and get into the cancer machinery by endocytosis process and there the beta radiation emission maximum beta radiation emission uh, destroy the dna of the cell 
due to this reason no more proliferation no more mitosis no more division of the cell carried out and the cancer cell no more survive there so this is uh, very important and other thing other process that accompanied with the beta radiation emission is uh, the emission of bram starling x rays which is uh, due to the effect when the electron or beta radiation emitted from the nucleus of uh, unstable nuclei by decay process into the atomic nuclei they undergo deceleration process due to the columbic repulsive forces and they emit the energy due to this as a result of this columbic repulsive forces which actually appear in the form of bram starling radiation these radiation production of these radiation associated with the, the energy of the beta particle if it is less energetic so less probability of a production of a bram starling radiation but if the energy of the radiation of the beta particle is very very high then more energetic bram starling radiation will be emitted similarly the bram starling radiation also emitted with great frequency probability if the atomic number of the nuclei increases so this is a beta radiation decay process and other is uh, the positron emission positron is an opposite to the beta radiation emission if there is a neutron rich nucleus there would be pro uh, definitely there would be decay through the beta radiation emission but if there is a proton enriched then there would be positron emission process will take place so proton will be disintegrated into a neutron and positron leaving behind less one less atomic number in the daughter nuclei so positron when undergo as uh, we studied when uh, electron uh, beta radiation emitted passes through the uh, electronic environment uh, due to repulsive forces deceleration take place and as a result of deceleration process there is a bram starling radiation emitted similarly when positron having a positive charge over there uh, passes through the nucle uh, atomic nuclei uh, environment in the through the electronic environment what actually happened there is a uh, attractive columbic forces due to this reason the kinetic energy of the uh, increases due to uh, of the positron by the columbic attractive forces and uh, also by attracted by the electron toward itself and these positron annihilated by one of the electron outside the nucleus of uh, uh, the unstable nuclei so these uh, annihilated uh, photon positron by the electron resulted as into two photons of uh, gamma radiation exactly at 180 angle and 511 kilo electron volt energy these two photon of energy that are exactly uh, opposite to each other uh, travel opposite to each other with 180 angles they are utilized in the detection of uh, cancer as well as uh, other diseases inside the body in pet imaging process so it's important uh, is also very high in the nuclear field by taking a high definition and high accurate highly accurate images of the diseases inside the body so other process which is alternate to this Uh, positron emission because positron proton actually uh, in positron emission uh, you know we have to reduce the proton number inside the nucleus in order to get the stability or in the nucleus this can be carried out by capturing an electron from the outer shell most probably from the uh, k shell so when electron is captured by the uh, nucleus having a proton in rich the proton by capturing one electron from the outer orbital get converted into the neutron but outside the nucleus there is a vacancy of electron in k shell that is fulfilled by l r m r n shells by emission of x radiations so however it is accompanied with the energy difference if energy difference between daughter and 
uh, parent nuclear is more than 1.02 mega electron volt then the probability of uh, positron decay is uh, high but in case uh, the energy is less than 1.02 mega electron volt then the probability of uh, electron capturing is high however it is not definitely that if energy is less than 1.02 mega electron volt it is only carried undergo through the electron capturing process but not it is a uh, uh, confined that it must be, it can be converted it can be decayed through positron emission even if energy is less than but most probability is that if electron uh, energy difference between these two uh, nucleoid is uh, one and uh, less than 1.02 mega electron volt most probability is that electron electron capturing process will occur okay so dear students uh, other thing is that isomeric transition Isomeric transition is uh, an important uh, consequence of uh, uh, the process as a consequence of a beta decay process, a positron decay process, or sufficient decay processes. So, psi type of process in which uh, at the end gamma radiation emitted uh, like that. So, this gamma radiation emission may uh, be produced or uh, liberated through isomeric transition process. So what is isomeric transition process? A nucleus can remain in several excited energy state above the ground state. As we studied in decay process of different uh, radionuclides when they undergo beta radiation process or positron and decay process. So after the decay process, they not uh, directly came to the point of a stable uh, position but they remain above this stable uh, position so at this position which is uh, higher than uh, the ground state or stable zero potential energy state now these states come to uh, let's come here this is a zero point energy kilo electron volt as we have studied in previous so after the beta positron decay or uh, positron decay process the newly formed daughter uh, radio uh, nucleate not come to at this point it may be at come at this point or come at this point or come at this point so these are the state which is still higher than the ground state so from this state they may come to ground state through number of uh, steps like this like this like this so such type of uh, uh, transitions are called uh, isomeric transition and these isomeric transition accompanied with the liberation of gamma radiation so gamma rays as we have studied in previous sections the decay of an uh, all these excited states are referred to as isomeric state so all these excited states are known as uh, isomeric state because these are above the ground state but have to convert into ground state by emission of gamma radiation so such type of states are called isomeric states to ground state with the lifetime of fraction of picosecond to many years the decay of uh, an upper exciter state yes this is another important point uh, with a lifetime of a fraction of a picosecond to many years so it's mean an element newly formed daughter nucleoid after the emission of a, a negative beta particle or positive beta particles they stay in its isomeric state if they consider itself stable in isomeric state such states are called metastable states because uh, they are these are not truly stable state just they are deceiving and the, uh, itself uh, that uh, uh, one atom one nucleoid is in its stable state but actually that is not in stable state the reason is that uh, this is a stable state S this is not stable state so at any time it have to uh, transit from this state to this state that is actually it's a stable state due to this reason this is called isomeric states and this stable state is called metastable state metastable state not true stable state the decay of an upper excited state to a lower excited state is called the isomeric transition in beta negative 
beta positive or electron capturing decay, the parent nucleus may reach any of these isomeric state of the daughter nucleus in lieu of the ground state. So, it can see in lieu of ground state mean it consider this is the ground state otherwise this is not a ground state you know this is uh, uh, above the ground state that is not true state stable state due to this reason and therefore these decay process are often accompanied by isomeric transition so definite isomeric transition transition mean and the movement transition of an uh, uh, change inside the nucleus from isomeric state to ground state so this is called isomeric transitions in isomeric transition the energy difference between uh, the isomeric states and the ground state uh, may appear as gamma rays when isomeric state are long life they are referred to as metastable state if it is in picosecond then it is not metastable but if it uh, stay in this state for a long time like hours to years then this state is called metastable state and can be detected by appropriate instrument. The metastable state is denoted by M and as in case of technetium, 99M technetium. The decay scheme of 99M is given in figure 5. Okay. So, please note here that this is a technetium that is formed from in previous lecture, you know, technetium 99M found from molybdenum. When molybdenum undergo beta radiation emission decay process, so as a result of this process, technetium 99M is formed. So, technetium 99M spent 6.02 half life time here and undergo 99% um, transition from 142. This is a 142 kilo electron volt state and come to 140 kilo electron volt state 99 of the 99 m technetium come here and from this they liberate 140 kilo electron volt uh, gamma radiation mission come to the actual stable state that is 99 that is not metastable and metastable state is that the state which is uh, above the actual stable state but it is also a stable for a long time so such type of state which is not true stable state but uh, appear for a long time that state is called metastable state okay if we see about the uh, decay equation in isomeric transition process uh, this is a metastable state of an uh, element and this is you no know, metastable state was converted into actual stable state there is no change in atomic mass there is no change in uh, 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 atomic number proton number so only gamma radiation with no mass with no proton just a photon of energy liberated so example of this you know you have studied that molybdenum converted and decay through beta particle into technetium 99m and this technetium what actually happened this technetium spent a 6.01 hour at this point and transit into this position by the emission of gamma radiation mission like that so this is the process here okay this is uh, this is the this is this process okay so it spends 6.01 hour and after sp uh, spending 6.01 hour half life here it undergo a transition from metastable state to actual stable state okay so then and uh, this state spent here 5.2.5 into 10 raised per 5 years and undergo beta decay process to give ruthenium okay. this is another decay scheme of uh, having isomeric transition in which cobalt 60 uh, exists in metastable state and spends 10.6 minute in this state and after 10.6 minute undergo inter uh, into cobalt 60 which half life is 0 0.5.27 year that is a stable position so this is uh, one kind of beta radiation emission take place but there is another uh, different kind of radionuclide which uh, emit more than one uh, photons of gamma radiation here is only one 
photon of gamma radiation emitted one two photon one is of two kilo electron volt that is not detected because the energy of that photon is very low only a 142 kilo electron volt and 140 kilo electron volt what is the difference between these two two kilo electron volt difference so this is emitted so this emission of a two kilo electron volt photon is negligible and cannot be detected because the energy of two kilo electron volt is very very minute but all the 99 and technetium come at this point and from this they all emit 140 kilo electron volt from that is detected by uh, imaging cameras that imaging camera give you diagnostic values of uh, diseases in uh, patients so this uh, nucleide actually as i have discussed uh, in previous lecture more than 80 percent 85 percent of the radio pharmaceutical label with this photon with this uh, radionuclide 99 m technetium in order to get the imaging because uh, the gamma radiation penetration power is very high a few meters they can travel in air as well as in uh, bodies solar bodies okay so other kind of uh, radionuclide that emit more than one kind of uh, gamma radiations uh, photons gamma 2 gamma 3 gamma 5 gamma 6 so abundance percentage of these is 38%, 21%, 6.4%. .4 and energy of uh, these photons that is emitted by gallium-67. There are four different kinds of uh, gamma radiation was emitted by this photon of uh, this uh, nucleide that is about 93.3 kilo electron volt to 184 kilo electron volt and 300 kilo electron volt and 393 kilo electron volt. So these are the energies liberated from different nucleides by a uh, uh, as a result of uh, uh, decay process, uh, either beta decay process, positron decay process, lifetime capturing process, or alpha decay process. Actually, gallium undergo alpha decay process when undergoing alpha decay process. The remaining uh, uh, the daughter nucleoid undergo uh, different gamma radiation emission process in order to stabilize uh, further stabilize the nucleus. So up till now, we have studied uh, uh, different kinds of uh, radiation emitted from the uh, radio nucleides that is unstable nucleides like that alpha particle like that uh, beta particle positron emitted particles uh, electron capturing process isometric transition process so in all these processes we studied that uh, uh, different kinds of radiation are emitted although these radiations are uh, utilized in different sectors of uh, industries and different sectors of human life but uh, these diagnostic uh, uh, these radiations are preferably used in the diagnostic processes of uh, diseases as well as therapeutic processes of diseases if we see about the gamma radiation processes gamma radiation when uh, are used in order to diagnostic radionuclides these are diagnostic radionuclides when these are labeled with some kind of as we have you show you have seen in our previous lectures uh, radionuclides are labeled with uh, biomolecule through uh, some chelator agent, some uh, directly or indirectly by using the chelator agent or without directly by labeling to the biomolecule. And when these biomolecules are injected inside into the patient's body, they get into the cell machinery where they emit the radiation by maximum accumulation. If there is a uh, gamma radiation emitter nucleide attached to the uh, biomolecule then this gamma radiation will be it passes uh, through the body and go outside the body that radiation will be the detected by cameras like that pet camera like that uh, spect camera so this will detect the point of uh, signaling point of uh, emission of radiation by creating by making an image so in this regard a uh, best image was uh, uh, draw there in order to get a uh, whole picture of the disease inside the body the other two kinds of uh, there is alpha particle and beta particle these two are attached to the biomolecule in order to destroy in order to burn in order to ionize the in order to destroy the dna of the cell so when these uh, radionuclides which are uh, emitted uh, which emit the alpha particle are gamma beta particles when they are attached to the biomolecules they and these biomolecule known as uh, having a radionuclide are known as radio pharmaceutical uh, 
get administered into the patient body they accumulate at this place of uh, cancer or uh, disease tissues where they emit these radiation these radiation as uh, they have an ability no ability to pass through the tissue cells and uh, they are in at the uh, local uh, burn the local tissues and destroy the uh, local machinery of the cells due to this reason the cancer cells was uh, burned and no more they can proliferate and no more they can divide and uh, due to this is this reason and uh, the uh, progression or uh, the increase of the disease not take place and due to this reason therapeutic uh, these uh, nucleates are known as the therapeutic nucleates these uh, strategies are adopted along with other type of uh, strategies uh, targeting molecular molecule th therapies uh, and uh, chemotherapy all these individually they also work but uh, all these molecules actually are labeled with these uh, nucleotide when these molecule labeled with uh, they may be antibody aptamer peptide small molecules uh, photothermal so all these molecule also labeled with uh, these uh, radionuclide and they have ability to accumulate at the cancer cell very quickly and with 100% efficiency so along with when they come at the cancer cell they also take along with it radionuclide radionuclide uh, inside the cancer cell they actually uh, continuously liberate and emit the radiation they rapidly burn the machinery of the cell particularly the dna of the cell so in this regard uh, this targeted delivery it take place uh, along with uh, this radionuclide that facilitate the radio pharmaceutical strategy nuclear medicine strategy for the treatment of cancer and diagnosis of cancer so other process uh, is internal conversion so as a whole we have studied a different radiation actually emitted from the nucleus uh, as a result of decay process one of that process as a result of that process that carried take place uh, as a consequence of radiation energy liberated or emitted from the nucleus is internal conversion process and uh, there is a prob probability that instead of uh, emitting a gamma ray photon the excited nucleus may transfer its excitation energy to an electron in the extra nuclear electron shell of its own atom particularly the k shell which is then ejected provided the excitation energy is greater than the binding energy of the k shell electron this only happen if electron is binded to the nucleus so through a binding energy so the k shell electron only emitted when the emitted excitation energy is greater than the binding energy if the binding energy is greater as compared to the excitation energy the k shell electron can never be replaced can never be ejected from the outer shell the ejected electron is referred to as a conversion electron as because the energy liberated from the nucleus actually used to eject an electron so this energy was converted into the ejection of electron so this is this electron is called conversion electron because it itself not actually uh, ejected from the uh, electronic environment but also by using by uh, accepting the energy absorbing the energy which is actually emitted from the nucleus that is greater than the binding energy of that electron with the nucleus and will have the kinetic energy equal to uh, gamma energy minus uh, um, binding energy so the difference of this energy with the, is the energy that will carries the elect conversion electron where is the excitation energy and where is the binding energy of the ejected electron this process is an alternative to gamma ray emission and is termed as internal conversion there are one way is gamma radiation emitted from the nucleus as such they emitted from the nucleus and go away from the nucleus and atomic environment other way this energy may be used by absorbed by the electron and if this energy is greater than the binding energy of the electron then it will be ejected with the difference of the energy okay and is termed as internal conversion the ratio of the conversion electron uh, ne to the observed uh, gamma rays is uh, referred to as conversion coefficient given by alpha alpha is equal to n 
conversion electron of a ratio of conversion divided by the gamma rays. The larger the conversion coefficient, the smaller the number of observed gamma rays. So, agar ya kon if the conversion coefficient is high, it means you will not you will observe very least number of gamma radiation will be emitted there because most of the gamma radiation will be converted into the conversion electron. The probability of internal conversion is higher with the transition energy is low. Okay. So this is an explanation how the gamma radiation emitted converted into conversion electron when gamma radiation emitted from the nucleus outside the environment they absorbed by the this electron and this electron ejected from this uh, environment that is a conversion electron otherwise and along with this conversion electron x-rays are accompanied uh, emission of x-rays uh, take place because the vacancy of this electron is fulfilled by the outer electron due to this reason and the difference of energy is liberated as a result of x-rays however in other way the gamma radiation not absorbed by the outer electron they are directly emitted from the environment in the form of a gamma rays okay this process also start and other series of x-rays like the k series l series you know as we have studied in previous lectures okay see the example this is a energy that is liberated from the nucleus and this energy is absorbed by this nucleus and this nucleus uh, sorry this electron and this electron ejected from this system in order to take the place this uh, like that mercury uh, when undergo beta radiation emission so at this state this uh, it is uh, its isomeric transition state at this state uh, they undergo the gamma radiation which this gamma radiation emission what actually absorbed by the uh, external new electron this electron emitted as a conversion electron so this was uh, sorry this was uh, observed from this when this electron from this state to this state comes uh, sorry in this state of transition isometric transition come to ground state as a result of this gamma radiation mission this gamma radiation converted into the uh, conversion electron and this was rep represented by internal conversion electron spectrum that is uh, the exact uh, uh, formation of uh, uh, and also the guarantee and also the uh, uh, you can say that uh, uh, re reason how the electron emitted from this process uh, orbital to uh, outside the electronic environment that is represented by the electronic spectra so come to another when electron is ejected from the uh, for example the k shell by internal conversion and upper shell electron will fall into the vacancy of the k shell and the difference in energy between the two shells will appear as a k x rays that is characteristic of the daughter nucleoid the corresponding conversion coefficient is designed a k alpha similarly it, if it is also probable that instead of k shell electron lm shell electron are rejected followed by the emission of lm x rays in this process this corresponding conversion coefficient then will be alpha l alpha m the total conversion coefficient is given by the sum of all possible conversion coefficient that is alpha t is equal to alpha k plus alpha l alpha like that okay so dear students come to the conclusion at uh, again as a as an alternate to characteristic x-rays emission in either electron capturing a, a internal conversion process the transition energy between the two shells can be transferred to an orbital electron which is then emitted from the atom if energetically permitted this process is referred to as the auger process the electron emitted is called an auger electron and similarly to conversion electron in internal conversion so it's mean x-rays further uh, have ability in order to emit in order to uh, leave the extra nuclear environment they also transfer their x-ray energy into another electron that electron and uh, uh, emitted from the nucleus uh, sorry uh, extra orbital uh, extra nuclear orbitals so such type of electron which in turn of uh, x-rays absorption uh, emitted from the extra nuclear environment these are called auger electron and the process of this uh, x-ray uh, absorption is called auger process
the vacancy in the shell due to an agar, agar process is filled by an electron transition from the upper shell followed by emission of characteristic x rays or agar electron as in internal conversion whether a particular vacancy in a given shell will result in the emission of a characteristic x rays or an agar electron is a matter of probability just so the fraction of vacancies in given shell that are filled with the accompanying x rays emission and no agar electron is referred to as a fluorescent sigil so again i repeat this uh, sentence the fraction of vacancies in a given shell that are filled with accompanying x rays so if there is a, a vacancy of electron and this vacancy of electron is filled by upper electron by the emission of x rays but there is no agar electron and um, process uh, carried out there so such type of uh, process is called fluorescence yield the fluorescence yield increases with the increase atomic number or the atom so it should be in your mind when atomic number increases in the outer orbital number of electron also increases so the process of uh, the absorption of energy gamma radiation uh, gamma energy from which actually emitted from the nucleus is uh, increased uh, due to this reason the ejection of the electron is most probably occur and as a result of this ejection of electron more more electron from upper orbital come to full, fill the place of uh, uh, below orbitals uh, as a result of x ray emissions so in this regard this type of uh, uh, process in which uh, gamma radiation emit an electron and as a result of this uh, uh, emission of electron uh, x ray emission take place such type of process uh, uh, yield is called fluorescence yield the transition energy between the two shell is always less than the binding energy of an electron in the lower shell and therefore cannot be be ejected for example the k characteristic x rays energy is always less than the binding energy of the k shell electron so the latter cannot undergo the agar ele process and cannot be emitted as an agar electron yes because uh, the electron which are, which are near to the nucleus are tightly bound with the nucleus and the binding energy is very high as is due to this reason it is not possible for that uh, x rays to to eject uh, these electron from the orbital because the excitation energy uh, of x rays is uh, less as compared to the binding energies due to this reason x ray energy have not ability to eject an electron as an agar electron which is near to the nucleus however x rays have ability to eject an electron only from those orbital which are away from the nucleus and the binding energy is less so those electron will be emitted from the will be ejected from the nucleus as an agar electron due to with the, by the absorption of x rays which have less binding energy as compared to the x rays transition energy okay dear students this is uh, the decay processes which we studied in uh, detail uh, i think uh, you completely understand if you still feel some deficiency and uh, some uh, issues please uh, let me um, by commenting uh, this lecture uh, we will discuss inshallah in some time in other lectures inshallah we will see you in next lecture okay allah hafiz